Jet Engine 3.5 is out, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at the new features and updates. If you're new to our channel, make sure you're subscribed, and of course, don't forget to hit the notification bell. And this is Julia from Crocoblock, and now let's get started. Custom meta storage feature allows storing standard WP meta fields in the separate table instead of the standard post meta table. Currently, this feature is only available for posts, and later it can be expanded to users and taxonomies. So, in the general settings section of the CPT settings, a toggle for custom meta storage has been added. When this toggle is enabled, a block with the name of the custom table that will be created for this CPT will appear along with a warning stating that renaming columns will result in the deletion of their data. All meta fields created for this CPT in this interface will be added as columns to the table. The new Save as a separate fields option has been added to the repeater field and will improve query handling and filter management, enhancing data structure flexibility. When this option is enabled, the repeater field will be saved in the database as a separate field. This feature is currently available only for posts, terms, and users. It may also be implemented later for custom content types, but it will require adding a table in the database. Jet Engine 3.5 now has a new merged query type. Using this query type, you can combine the results of multiple queries into one and use this combined query to display the merged results in a single listing. Currently, only queries of the same type can be merged, for example, post with post, terms with terms, etc. And there is also one more amazing feature I'd like to talk more about. Jet Engine Components the component allows a web developer creating a site for a client to add custom widgets supported by Jet Engine to the site. The developer can use these widgets while working on the site and the client can also add them to new pages, modifying only the parameters allowed by the developer in the component settings. Creating components is similar to creating standard listing items and it is done in the same interface. What is the difference between components and templates or listing items, you might ask? Well, a template has a fixed design and fixed content. With components, however, creating the component, the web developer can make certain parts dynamic. So, texts, images, or the color of specific elements can be changed. For the end user, editing these elements will look the same as configuring any static widget. And listing items also have dynamic elements that can have different values for different items within a listing grid. However, the user cannot directly control the settings of each item. And they can do so only through a global query that manages the data for the entire listing. In the case of components, the user can individually configure each control of every component. Now let me show you how to create and use components. For example, I needed to create a service block. Since it's a static information, I will not create a separate CPT or CCT. That will be a component for each service card, so I can add as many cards to the page as needed. The components are created on the same page where you create listings. Just hit the Add New Component button right here, set its name, and pick the component view. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create components in Elementor, but you can also use a Gutenberg, Twig, or Bricks. Now I will add such elements as a title, image, text, and button. Now I'm gonna make these elements dynamic. To add the controls, I'm gonna proceed to the component settings by pressing this gear-shaped icon. There will be general settings, 
Component Content Controls and the Component Style Controls. Once the Content Controls tab is unfolded, I can now add all the needed ones by pressing the Add Item button and setting the control label, key and the value. For example, for the image widget, I will set the service image label, control name, then set its type, single media, and choose the default value. The same process will be repeated for the rest of the elements. So now there are also service title, service description, and the service link component controls. And now we need to apply the controls to the corresponding elements. You can assign control values in several ways. Dynamic tags for Elementor, Dynamic tokens for Bricks, Jet Engine Dynamic Widgets, or Jet Engine Macros. As I build this layout with Elementor widgets, I will apply dynamic tags for all controls. However, you can use the tools most appropriate for your case. Now let's assign the corresponding dynamic tags to the relevant elements. I styled the elements a bit and now I'm gonna click on the image widget. Then press the dynamic tags button right here and choose component control image. Once the control name is set, the image will appear. I will apply the same steps for the title, description, and the button, choosing the component control value option. Now every element has the default value of the component controls. The created components can be found on the listing items slash components page and can be easily edited by pressing the added component settings button right here. Adding the component to a page is super easy. It's available as a widget under the component name. In the page builder editor, you will see the controls you set in the component settings and the user can configure each element individually. In the same way, you can add style controls. For Elementor and Bricks, style controls are added through dynamic tags and tokens. In the case of timber slash twig and block components, you can specify the styles directly in the component settings using custom CSS with CSS variables. I set the default color for the button label. So now the user is able to set a different color for the button label for each component separately. You can use the controls for components in combination with the dynamic visibility module to render certain elements of the component depending on the selected control value or to hide elements if the control value is empty. For example, in this component, a link to the service landing page will be displayed only if the user specifies a URL for the service link field in the settings. Guys, it's not even the end of the list of what can be done. You can discover the biggest advantage of Jet Engine components in combination with the Timber slash Twig editor because you get the cleanest HTML output and the fastest component rendering on the front end. Additionally, you have no layout limitations and can create the most creative components like this one with the elements that are not easy or sometimes impossible to reproduce in the editor. Finally, you can use HTML and CSS from any external resources and simply insert the corresponding controls where they are required. 
As a result, you get highly versatile widgets for Elementor, Block Editor, or Bricks. We will cover the whole component's functionality in our future videos and show how to create components in Twig and Gutenberg from scratch, so make sure you are subscribed and have the notifications turned on. And this will be it for today's overview. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and let us know what you think about Jet Engine 3.5. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.